Unless you've been living in a hobbit hole your whole life, you've probably heard the legendary story about the odd and sometimes intense friendship between C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, one strange note in their story is Lewis's great love for the Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's apparent intense hatred for Narnia. Now, the story goes that Tolkien's disdain and jealousy caused a lifelong rift in their friendship. But is that really the whole story? Well, buckle up because we are about to wade through the actual historical evidence and even take a look at some of the fairly recent discoveries to see if this legendary story really holds up under scrutiny. Now today we're looking in the lives of two men who weren't only legendary writers and scholars, they were also men of intense character. And so it's fitting that today's episode is sponsored by a school like Boyce College. Boyce College in Louisville prepares graduates for the what and the who they will be after college. And one way Boyce College accomplishes this is through a life of discipleship. What students learn in class and during chapel gets lived out on campus and in the community. Each student is required to actively participate in a local church. And there are dozens of biblically faithful churches located only minutes from campus. And Boyce College will happily help make that connection. Now you can learn more about Boyce College by visiting boycecollege.com slash faith. And also thank you to the unwavering support of my friends and supporters at Patreon. You partner with this channel because you believe in its mission and I'm so thankful that you've joined us. Now we've got a lot of digging to do today so let's get started. It's time to leave the Shadowlands behind and journey to a world that's more real than our own. It's time to follow me into the wardrobe. Jack and Tollers, as C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien called each other, first met as young professors in Oxford, where they quickly bonded over their love of mythology, fairy tales, and ancient languages. Now, I speak in another episode about the most significant role that Tolkien played in C.S. Lewis's life, specifically leading him to faith in Christ, and I'll link that video in the description below. But to make a long story short, the two men were the closest of friends for nearly 20 years, and they met nearly weekly throughout that time as a part of a famous literary group known as the Inklings. And when the Inklings got together, they would share excerpts of their latest works and progress, including... Lewis's Ransom Trilogy, and even Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, one chapter at a time. In fact, as the story goes, Jack loved Tolkien's work so much that he basically poked and prodded Tollers along the way until the epic masterpiece was finally finished. And without Lewis's love of Middle Earth, we probably wouldn't have the Lord of the Rings today. Tolkien himself mentioned this when he said, The unpayable debt that I owe to him was not influence as it is ordinarily understood, but sheer encouragement. He was for long my only audience. Only from him did I ever get the idea that my stuff could be more than a private hobby. But for his interest and unceasing eagerness for more, I should never have brought the Lord of the Rings to conclusion. So apparently Lewis was the OG ringer, the first diehard Tolkienite. But the truth is, the literary admiration wasn't exactly mutual. When Jack sent him the first few chapters of Narnia to preview, Tolkien was pretty much appalled. Now, most of what we know about this is based on what was written in Tolkien's official biography, as well as some additional secondary sources. But based on these sources, there seem to be a handful of primary claims about why Tolkien hated Narnia. Let's unpack them now. Number one, messy mythology. Well, we'll just go with this quote, which is an account from one of Jack and Tolkien's good friends, Roger Green. Tolkien, upon reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, was not at all happy about it. I hear you've been reading Jack's children's story, he said to me. It really won't do, you know. I mean to say, nymphs and their ways? The love life of a fawn? Doesn't he know what he's talking about? Now, seeing as how this is a family-friendly channel, I won't go into too much detail here, but Tolkien seems to be suggesting that an accurate portrayal of the Roman mythological fawn would have been inappropriate in a children's book, to say the least. However, almost as offensive to Tolkien as an accurately portrayed fawn in a children's story was an inaccurately portrayed fawn in any story. You see, Tolkien despised inconsistency in world building, and it's evidenced in this account from a fellow inkling, George Sayer. Lewis was hurt, astonished, and discouraged when Tolkien said that he thought the book was almost worthless, that it seemed like a jumble of unrelated mythologies. 
because Aslan, the Fawns, the White Witch, Father Christmas, the Nymphs, and Mr. and Mrs. Beaver had quite distinct mythological or imaginative origins. Tolkien thought that it was a terrible mistake to put them together in Narnia, a single imaginative country. The effect was incongruous and for him, painful. Number two, too much allegory. Now, this is one of the better known objections by Tolkien that Narnia contained too much allegory and Tolkien famously hated allegory. Now, I have an entire episode on why Narnia isn't an allegory, which is linked in the video description below, but let's just say Tolkien's criticism is a bit ironic. I mean, he is often accused of using allegory in The Lord of the Rings, which he emphatically denied. Number three, too much religion. Another problem that Tolkien had with the Narnian stories was that he felt the religious themes were a little too on the nose. Now, this is a surprising perspective given Tolkien's appreciation of the Ransom Trilogy, which included long theological diatribes throughout the series. Nevertheless, this was one of the reasons Tolkien was not a fan. Number four, jealousy. Now, one final and often repeated claim is that Tolkien was envious of Jack's lightning fast pace in writing Narnia. After all, Middle Earth literally took decades to construct, while Lewis released his entire series in just six years. Now, for a slow, meticulous, methodical writer like Tolkien, it was probably not an issue of jealousy at all, but simply frustration. Frustration that the world of Narnia wasn't nearly as richly developed as he thought that it should have been. And to be honest, we really don't have any evidence that Tolkien ever was jealous of Lewis other than a secondhand account from a friend who may or may not have been influenced by Tolkien's biographer who may have been engaging in some conjecture of his own. So what are we to make of all this? Did Tolkien really hate Narnia so much that it caused a deep rift between these two former best friends? Well, recent scholars have started to question whether Tolkien actually even hated Narnia all that much in the first place. And I'm going to link to a great article by Josh B. Long that goes into all of this, and much of this video is based on his article. There's also a great podcast that I'll link to here featuring renowned Lewis scholar Holly Ordway and our friend David Bates from Pints with Jack that discusses a lot of this further. But the bottom line is this, a lot of this story has been told with little real evidence. Holly Ordway describes it as a game of telephone. And the truth is, we don't even know if Tolkien read any of the books beyond those first early chapters. Now, it is true that Tolkien didn't like Narnia. I mean, without a doubt, Tolkien actually says it himself in a letter, which we'll get to in a second. But did he despise it? Well, the evidence seems to be completely contrary to that idea. Now, one of my favorite stories about this is when Tolkien's granddaughter was visiting her grandpa, she asked him for some books to read. He gave her a handful of books, which included not The Hobbit, not The Lord of the Rings, but The Chronicles of Narnia. He actually had a set on hand in his home. At the end of the day, I think it's safe to say that Tolkien personally disliked the Narnian books, and that's okay. Different people have different tastes, and Tolkien himself said that he was a man of limited sympathies and that his tastes were not normal. In fact, there's evidence to suggest that Tolkien grew in his appreciation of the books in later years. Joss B. Long's article reveals a previously unpublished letter in which Tolkien responds to a fan. I'm glad that you have discovered Narnia. These stories are deservedly very popular. But since you ask if I like them, I'm afraid the answer is no. I do not like allegory, and least of all religious allegory of this kind. But that is a difference of taste, which we both recognized and did not interfere with our friendship. And there it is, the key to really understanding Tolkien's view of Narnia, as well as his relationship with Jack. At least by the end of his life, Tolkien didn't despise Narnia, it just wasn't his taste. However, he recognized that Narnia was very meaningful to people all over the world, and he respected that opinion. But more importantly, we see in this letter the truth about Jack and Tolkien's friendship. That throughout all of these disagreements, the criticisms, and even the hurt. So why does all of this matter? Why am I making a video about this today? Well, for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to encourage all of you Tolkienites out there who tend to write Narnia off before giving it a fair shot to just remember, Tolkien himself admitted that his tastes were not normal. And as Josh Long and others have put it, Narnia wasn't really the problem, Tolkien was. 
And if you haven't taken the time to judge the stories on their own merit, for story's sake, you're really doing yourself a disservice. But more importantly, I think it's important to set the record straight on a friendship that was built on something much more meaningful than literature or prestige or fame. It was really built over time on a foundation of truth and honesty and above all else, faith. And so just like their books, the friendship of C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien truly stood the test of time.